All right, everybody, in class we discussed the beginnings of solving a differential equation using series. And in this video, I just want to give you an example of how to do a slightly more complicated differential equation, how to solve that using series. So as we discussed in class, when we're solving a differential equation using these power series, this is our guess right here. And again, this guess makes sense because many functions can be represented by a power series. And as we discussed in class, taking derivatives of a power series is as simple as um, using the power rule that you learned back in Calculus 1. So we take the guess for the solution of the differential equation, we take our derivatives, we plug all of that into the differential equation. And our differential equation ends up looks, looking something like this. Um, that's pretty ugly, so we want to be able to simplify it by combining these two series into one. Now again, what we talked about in class is making the powers on x the same in each one of these series. To do that, we introduce uh, some other new dummy variable. We'll just call it k. And for this series, we're going to call k equal to n minus 2, or n is equal to k plus 2. In this series here, we're just going to make n equal to k. We make those substitutions, and it's not too difficult to get to this step right here, I hope. You'll notice one thing that I did is I took this 4 and I moved it inside of the summation. That's just using the distributive property. So, okay, so we talked about if we want to combine two summations, we need the powers on x to be the same here. And we also need the lower index of summation to be the same. And we actually got that naturally by making this uh, little transition decay. So great, now we're ready to combine these two sums into one. There it is right there. We combine the two sums into one, and I actually factored an x to the k power out of each one of the terms in the summation. And we made the argument in class that in order for this whole summation to equal zero, this whole big polynomial, that each one of these coefficients is going to have to equal zero. So we get this equation right here, and that thing has a name. It is called the recurrence relation. Oh my gosh, and I just noticed that all of my lower indices of summation should be k and not n, of course, because we got rid of n. And I noticed that because I was wondering for what values of k is this recurrence relation valid? You notice that our summations go from k equals 0 all the way up to k equals infinity. So this is valid for all k values from 0 to infinity. Well, let's start at k equals 0 with this recurrence relation and see what equations we get out of it. OK, all I did is plug k equals 0 into this equation. We got this equation right here. Let's look at k equals 1 and beyond. OK, so I wrote down, I guess, six equations here from our recurrence relation. Hopefully, that's enough to be able to find the pattern with our a value. Now, as we did in class, let's rewrite each one of these equations here. OK, so I'm getting that a2 is negative 4 times a0 over 2. I'm getting that a3 is negative 4 times a1 over 3 times 2. And you'll notice that I'm not simplifying these. 3 times 2 is 6, and 4 over 2 is 2, because I think it's easier to find a pattern if we don't simplify. Uh, with a4, we get that it's equal to negative 4 times a2 divided by 4 times 3. But we know something about a2. We know that a2 is negative 4 times a0 over 2. OK, so I think I might have enough for a pattern here, but I'm going to keep going just to be sure. OK, I think this is plenty to find a pattern. But what I'm noticing is something pretty interesting is happening. All of our even coefficients are being related to a0, and all of our odd coefficients are being related uh, ultimately to a sub 1. So if we're going to write down a pattern for what's happening here, we would have to say all of our even coefficients. The way that we would say that is a sub 2n. Let's see, that's going to be equal to negative 4 to the n power times a naught divided by 2n factorial. And you'll notice that since we have a negative to the power of n, we actually have an alternating series. So I'm going to write it like this, because this indicates to me an alternating series. And this 4 to the n power we're going to uh, use separately here in a minute. We'd also like to write down a formula for the odd a values. And yeah, the power on negative 4 is just going to be n. I think that makes sense, because the power on 4 here is 3. Our n value would be 3, and our 2n plus 1 would be 7. So yeah, OK, that makes sense. OK, so that was pretty fun. We got to find a pattern for both our even coefficients and our odd coefficients. And now, what is it that we were actually doing here again? Uh, way back at the beginning, we made a guess that the solution to our differential equation was a sub n x to the n. We just found out what a sub n was. We had to split it up into two different pieces. All of our even coefficients look like this, and all of our odd coefficients look like this. But it's just a sum, so we can group all of our even coefficients together into one sum. 
and all of our odd coefficients together into another sum. So our sum is going to be split up, and our solution to the differential equation then is going to be split up into those two pieces. Now, about writing this in a little bit nicer form than what we have, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the a naught, the constant, out of this summation. I'm going to pull the a1 out of this summation. And if possible, I'd really like to group these two terms together. You'll see why we want to do this in a minute, but um, in this case, it's actually really easy to group the 4n and the x to the 2n power together because 4 to the n is the same as 2 squared to the n, which is 2 to the 2n power. So I'm going to rewrite my 4 to the n as 2 to the 2n here. Now, here it's going to be slightly trickier, but we can say that 4 to the n is 2 to the 2n. That's great. If we want to group this 4 to the n with this x to the 2n plus 1, though, we need this to have a 2n plus 1 power on it. What did we just do mathematically to put that plus 1 power on that 2? Well, what we did is we multiplied by 2. So now the left-hand side of the equation here is equal to the right-hand side of the equation. Of course, we don't have a 4n times 2 in the sum. We just have a 4n, 4 to the n. So we can just solve for 4 to the n power and get that 4 to the n could be rewritten in this way right here. Okay, let's plug all that stuff in and see what happens. Okay, so now hopefully it's pretty clear why we did that little bit of algebra with the green here and the purple here. Um, we have the same power on the 2 as we do on the x, so we can actually just group this together into one term just like that and likewise with the 2n plus 1. Now just like the problem we did in class, these summations are starting to look pretty familiar. Uh, you can go to your list of Maclaurin series and you'll realize that this is just a cosine series with 2x replacing x. So this first series is just a cosine of 2x. The second series looks just like a sine of 2x. So okay, that's the solution to your differential equation, and we did all of that using power series. Of course, you might be thinking right now, well, I knew how to solve this differential equation in the first place. Uh, yeah, we're just kind of starting you off easy with ones that aren't too complicated. Uh, in class, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about differential equations that you can't solve using techniques that we've talked about in this class. What we can do is we can use these power series to solve those differential equations that we can't solve using any other method and we can write out approximations to those solutions using the power series and we can even come up with a graph of an approximation to that solution uh, using these series. And We'll do all of that in class next time. Um, we'll also discuss further sort of what's going on here with this A0 and this A1 in this problem. Um, but for now I want to end this video and I want to get you this video quiz number 16 here. I want you to do the same thing that we did above, solve using series, Except this time uh, we left out the 4 and we replaced the plus with the minus sign. See what happens with this series solution to this differential equation and I'll see you all in class.